Last week, our hero Eric was a random victim of a sleep by fruit. You idiot! With school back in session and Halloween coming around, we thought it would be a good time to do a robotics demonstration and show how Eric was made. And so we're going to give Eric his facelift and demonstrate to our audience how you can make a simple talking skull at home. Now it's not necessary for you to go through this type of expense, but we're going to give Eric a complete new servo board equipped with rotating eyes. We'll begin by taking a plastic Lindbergh skull and drilling out the eye sockets using a one inch hole bit with WD-40 as a lubricant. Next, we're going to put two marks right next to these protrusions underneath the skull. Conveniently, these two protrusions allow us to fit in a 3 inch hole saw to drill a hole through the bottom of the skull. Now we'll use a drill press and a 3 inch hole saw to slowly and methodically drill that 3 inch hole through the skull. Once again we will use WD-40 in order to keep the plastic from melting and stop it from causing the blade to bunch up. It is also important for safety reasons to have that skull tightly secured before you begin drilling. Continue to slowly and methodically raise the drill bit up and down, cutting it in little increments until you have completely cut the hole through the base. Next we will use a Dremel tool with a cutting blade to cut a rectangular area where the base of the eye mount will fit. Now we'll glue in the teeth to our model. I use hot glue because it allows me to take the teeth out in case I make a mistake. If you would like, you can wait until after you paint the skull to put in the teeth. But if you do so, make sure to put a little bit of grease where the grooves of the teeth are so that paint doesn't get in there and make it impossible for you to glue it. For our initial coat of paint, we used Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Ultra Cover Flat White Primer. Paint it lightly and in short bursts to avoid any running. Use multiple coats if you have to. For the high contrast areas between the teeth and in the bone, we're going to use Krylon Color Max Acrylic Latex using a gloss leather brown that can be cleaned with soap and water. We'll begin by brushing a streak of leather brown in between each tooth. Next we will use alcohol wipes to feather the brown acrylic latex paint into the white oil-based primer. We will continue to paint brown along the base of the teeth and then continue to feather that out into the white primer as well. Continue to paint brown lines anywhere there is a change in texture, a split in bone, a connection at the nose, a separation in bone structure, essentially any change in contrast. And we will continue to feather that into the white paint. Continue this process over the entire surface of the skull, front and back, top and bottom, remembering to feather as you go along. Make sure to paint the interior of the eyes and the nose a solid brown so that as little light reflects as possible. 
Do the same with the skull cap, but add a little extra brown and do a little bit of extra feathering. Finally, I used a Rust-Oleum Premium Latex Flat Black to paint the interior of the skull. Do the same thing for the interior of the cap. This should keep straight light from reflecting off of the parts on the interior of the skull. Is it done yet? No, it's not done yet. We still have to add the servos, do the robotics, add the controllers. That'll be done next week. We'll hurry up. You remember what happened the last time you rushed me. You put me in a watermelon, you idiot. Well, I took you out and put you in the computer. Be happy. I don't like being in this computer. But it does give me a lot of power. Yeah, well, be careful with it. It's time for lights out. Whoa, Eric! You out of your mind? <laughs> Say good night, Eric. Good night, Eric.